Thanks, Claudio. So I will uh, get through this pretty quickly because uh, much of what I want to say has already been covered. So, um, you know, in the past few days, we've, we've talked about uh, a lot of really interesting uh, elements of the overall constellation of problems in TB. And, um, you know, what I want to just do briefly is to kind of go through this, this idea of the broader ecosystem and why it's important not to, uh, not to have just our view. Although our view is necessary as experts, it needs to be opened up. So, um, you know, I showed this slide earlier, right? Where are we in point A and what is point B? So um, all of us are at different places on here, but, you know, this is uh, pretty complicated. There are a lot of uh, stakeholders that have needs that must be met both on the supply side and the demand side. The countries themselves uh, have limited budgets. Funding, you know, the one uh, message I think I've heard repeatedly here is the, the funding gap is a real threat. And, you know, I was just thinking is that either we can combine forces and tackle this proactively or it just seems like only when things really get bad then do humans step up? I mean, Ebola was an example, uh, you name it. You know, when, you know, when there are um, multiple demands for funds, uh, you know, it's just like we just don't address things until they get really bad. And so um, we have to figure out a way to, to counter that. Um, but again, you know, looking at this broader uh, healthcare ecosystem, you know, the patient pathway, I think, is instructive. You know, uh, at the end of the day, what is their journey? What, you know, we ourselves as patients, what is our journey, you know? And um, the, uh, the example of that uh, uh, TB patient who came through uh, the U.S. and uh, I think, uh, I forgot who told me the story, but, uh, um, you know, there was an MDR patient who took 11 months kind of bopping around in the United States before they actually, oh, MDR. <laughs> Right? So is care available? If it's available, is it correct? If it's correct, how long does it take? And at the end of the day, is the patient compliant? So uh, I showed this slide earlier, and um, I, I constantly go back to this because, you know, David talked about solutions, and solutions, understandably, have to be comprehensive. So it shouldn't deter us from finding out where can we plug in a piece of the overall uh, pro you know, solution to the problem. But that alone, will, may, although necessary, may not be sufficient. So um, you know, some of the things that we've recently been looking at, uh, and Madhu talked about this, is what are the, what are the delays? You know, if a patient is ill and is actually seeking care, Okay, what is it, you know, how big a magnitude is that problem? And these are data from uh, both China and India, and the take-home message is it's roughly uh, about two months. Two months before a patient is getting therapy. And uh, in Ethiopia, I don't think I showed the data, but uh, Ethiopia, the same thing was found. So um, what are we doing as innovators in this overall problem trying to solve that? Uh, that element. Madhu um, uh, yesterday it mentioned this really interesting uh, paper, and this is using uh, standardized patients. These were guys who were actors going into physicians' uh, se setting and sa with a, a script. Here, here's here's my history, doc. And you know the, the take-home message is that you know uh, there were hundreds of, uh, of practitioners, some which were non-qualified and some of which were qualified. And the take-home message is that very rarely are patients actually treated correctly. If they actually get to the place where they are, are, are encountering, you know, a care point, then they're not getting treated correctly. So on the physician treatment side, you know, the patient got to where they should have gotten, but uh, either policies are not being followed or we've got this Wild West uh, syndrome of uh, treatment. And then uh, I think the other landmines that we all stepped on was um, I read several health economic papers talking about the cost effectiveness of gene expert. State of the art technology, um, you know, really a great accomplishment, no kidding. Um, but when you actually do the randomized controlled trials and you compare it to something that's 100 years old, no difference in uh, changing uh, morbidity and mortality. So 
Uh, why is this? Well, it, again, the clinician's uh, empirical treatment is described to, to be the cause of this. And just think about it. If you're a doc and there's a patient here and you've got all of the diagnostic information in front of you and you're looking at them and they've been coughing for two weeks, they've got a fever, what do you do as a, a compassionate human being? Well, the, the, the bias is to, well, let's go ahead and treat you. Well, we don't need diagnostics if we're going to just treat, right? Um, of course, the problems that come up with that are, are numerous. So um, this is part of the, the broader ecosystem. So um, this is a slide adapted from Fine, and I, I really like it because it talks about this, uh, this at least from the, the diagnostic technologies and the systems requirements for effective management of patients through their journey. Then. We're, we're focused here on DST, and rightly so. This is, a, this is an urgent, unmet need, and we have to figure out how to do this. But at the same time, there are other places in this broader ecosystem that have to be addressed. And although it's outside the purview of the CPTR mandate for DST, rapid DST, for IVD companies that are interested in solving problems, here's a roadmap for you. So the take home message really is, uh, you know, t technology solutions, even if we can get them to be perfect, and they're not, um, they are necessary but not sufficient. So we have to look at the challenges of TB control from a systems perspective. So, uh, you know, I, I can't do any more than what we've, uh, we've done in these past two days. Um, but, you know, um, what I, I am cautiously optimistic about is, is, and David talked about this, is that, you know, the, the talent in this room is unbelievable. Sebastian, your stuff on, on the, uh, the, the detailed analysis of uh, that patient and the epistasis and you know, how TB evolves. We need funding to continue this kind of research. There's an untapped narrative there that we have to explore. For companies that are working in technology platforms, you know, okay, at the end of the day, uh, David, you know, looking at uh, you know, DSTs, um, these are, the, these are the technological solutions that uh, stand on the foundation of the science that we're all doing. With uh, regulators, it was really great for Heike to, to talk about the, uh, the, the, the uh, I, I wouldn't say it's collegiality, but it's very close to that, about let's put our heads together on how to uh, uh, address next generation sequencing as a promising technology. Because nobody here has the answer, but collectively, I think we're smarter than we are individually. So anyway, um, there's a multiplicity of problems in this broader ecosystem. So uh, if, I, if I think of uh, any group that could really make uh, tangible progress on this, we're, we're in this room today. So I think that's my last slide. I hope I get us back on time a little bit more. But ultimately, the patients are, are kind of what we're after, right? This is why we are here today. Thanks very much.